Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Today, I think it's time that we start on our reed farm over there. I also want to increase the size of our crop farms here. Mostly because I have a mending villager and I'm going to need four more books for my armors. I don't have diamond armor at the moment, but I will want diamond armor. And I will need mending for each piece of that. In addition, I'm going to want uh, more books, more emeralds for books for efficiency for both of my for my axe, specifically. And just some uh, extra copies of some of the other enchantments I have in there. So I think it's time that we start running paper trades. And to do that, we're going to need a big reed farm. So uh, let me gather up some resources and I'll meet you over there in the desert. And I'll show you kind of how I have this in mind. All right. So sugarcane farm time. A couple things to know about sugarcane. Unlike our crop farm over there. Sugarcane does not, uh, cannot be planted away from water. You have to be directly next to water in order for sugarcane to grow or to be planted and grow. Uh, because of this, there's kind of two main designs that I've found that I will probably end up using in this world. One is just kind of a straight line of water and then planting the sugar canes along both sides. So what what that'll generally turn into is one row of sugar cane, one row of water, two rows of sugar cane, one row of water, two rows of sugar cane, one row of water, all as far down as you want and as long as you want. Um, reason being is that, well, this that method that I just showed is really useful if you're doing automatic farm because you can do, uh, you can run tracks underneath the section where the, the sugar cane is and it'll collect all of the the, the sugar cane when you go to harvest it uh, but we're not going to do that method right now what we're going to do is more of a manual method so if I can uh, only remove one here so what I like to do is I like to pick a random spot in the field here and then the way that I like to Kind of the, the design that I, I like to, to use. I'm going to use dirt and gravel to kind of kind of explain this. So what we do is we put a a piece of water here. And so that will you know supply water all the way around it. So these two spots are filled with water then. And then so if we're going this direction, if this is kind of the direction of our farm. So this spot here gets watered from this spot here. We can dig a hole here. And then this spot here is watered from this hole here. And then going on to the third spot, if we dig a hole here, that's this spot is then watered from this hole here. And then this last spot here will be watered from the, the next water here. So that turns into a four block gap between our water holes. And then if we go over one block and up two blocks, that's where our next water hole is going to be. So then here it becomes two blocks and one. So that's kind of the, the general pattern that we're going to use on this, uh, this wide open field. So I'm going to do that, that same pattern all the way across here. I think what I'm going to do, 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 do I'm going to start, let's say, let's say two. I'll start here. I'll have this be my first, uh, my first water hole. And what I like to do is I like to add a jack-o'-lantern at the bottom of my hole here. So here, I went down one too many... So I put a jack-o'-lantern here, and then I put a water bucket down. And then from here I can put 
reads all the way around. And then I'm going to do one more step, which is to put a carpet uh, here on top of the water so that I don't have to worry about as I'm running through my, my field of falling down into all of my water holes. So let me, I'm probably going to, I'll go down this way a ways and then over and across and kind of fill in kind of a square here and we'll see how much, uh, how much resources I have left after that. So I will see you guys later. All right. I have planted about 1200 sugar cane. And let me tell you the, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's going to be a good farm for me. So, uh, I'm going to go and trade a whole bunch of paper with the, the librarians over there and see if we can't get enough emeralds to get all of the, the books that we want. Paper. 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 I think I'm going to try to spread this around and get as many of them up another level as I can. Gotten six from these guys. Mending. At Thirty-two. We're at thirty. All right. <gasps> this is awesome. This is amazing. So. The apprentice trade also has a chance to have a enchanted book and so I just traded some paper with him to get him up to apprentice and he has unbreaking three fortune three unbreaking three that is fantastic let me update the sign fortune unbreaking all right I think it's time that we talk about what books that we still need. So I think for the diamond shovel, all I need is unbreaking. Same with the pickaxe. Diamond axe, I want efficiency five along with unbreaking. So that's three unbreakings plus one efficiency five. For my diamond sword, I still want a couple additional enchantments. I want sharpness five, and I guess I have looting right here. So I just need, I could get another unbreaking and combine it with the looting and then put it on. Uh, I will also want sharpness five at some point. So I might, I might try and find sharpness five before I put all three of them on to the sword. So I need four unbreakings for sure. I need another unbreaking for each of the diamond armor pieces that I'm going to have. Plus my bow. So I need nine unbreaking. I need nine of those. I need one... Uh, Efficiency five. And then I need um sharpness. I need one sharpness five as well. So sharpness looting unbreaking for the sword. Efficiency unbreaking. I'm breaking, I'm breaking. Okay. And then four for those. For the bow. For the bow, I want unbreaking. I want infinity, which I already have. And then I need power. 
So uh, let's use this sign. So I need power. One of those. Protection. I need three more protection four books for the rest of my armor set. I already have one, but I need three more for the other um, pieces. Um, I think all of boots, I'm going to put mending, unbreaking, protection, and feather falling on them. So I have feather falling. So I, this is the only feather falling book that I need. So I don't need another one. I will need three more protection. I will need, I think, four more mending books. I won't be able to put mending on the bow while I have infinity on there. So one power, three protection, four mending. Uh, power, one, protection, three, mending, four. Um, and that might be all of the one, all of the enchantments that I need. So nine unbreaking, one efficiency, one sharpness. I don't have the sharpness trade yet. I do not have the power trade yet. Three protection, four mending. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a bunch of books. How many books do I need? I need 10, 18, I need 19 books. Okay, I'm gonna go grab 19 books and we'll start uh, figuring out all of the enchantments here. I think I grab efficiency. One of you. Need nine unbreaking, is that what I figured out? Nine unbreaking. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. All right, I got six unbreaking out of the nine that I need. So I need to go uh, harvest up some more reeds and paper and do some more trades. All right, let's throw unbreaking on these items. Oops. And my... Uh, anvil just broke. Anvils will break over time. Uh, the more you use it, the more the faster they'll break. So that's not unexpected. Let's see here. Efficiency and unbreaking. This way it's a three, this way it's a five. Throw it on there. Cool. Let's put looting and on breaking three on the same one. We're gonna try to add um, sharpness five to that book as well. All right, so we've got mm, unbreaking and efficiency finished. We also have protection done. So I think we're going to consolidate this down to one sign. So I still need sharpness. Need one of them. I need power. I need one of them. And I need mending. I need four of them. So then I can remove this. All right. So. Now it's kind of a waiting game. You need to wait for the uh, reed farm to grow again. 
I need the crop farm here to grow again. I think what I might do is turn this section here into another crop farm, turn that section into another crop farm, and then terraform this section over here so I can turn this into a full section. So let me, let me get to that and I will be back. So this is what the fields ended up looking like after I added the two more over there and finished off this one. Looks a lot more open and I can see the librarian's tower a lot easier here. I ended up filling out the paths all the way around. Um, I'm considering making one change to the paths. And that change would be instead of a half slab down here, I would put either a full block or half slabs on top so that it looks kind of like this. But I haven't decided if I like this more or not. So let me know. Is this something that you think looks better? Do you like the, the half slabs on better on the bottom more? One of the reasons why I'm considering going with this raised path instead of the one that's just a half slab on the bottom is I'll be able to hide lighting in here a lot easier. And I can even put like a carpet over the top. I'll still be able to see the half slabs on the side or pumpkins on the side or whatever light I use, but it won't like, get in the way of stopping my, my run. So let me, let me know what you guys think and I may end up changing all of it over to full blocks or half slabs or top set half slabs. So, yep. I have managed to get the rest of the enchanted books that I need. And so now I just need to get levels so I can actually combine them and apply them to my armor and the bows. Uh, I think all of my tools are already fully enchanted. And I guess I need to do my sword as well. So I'll be back when I've finished that. All right. I have done it. After a long last, my sword is fully enchanted. My helmet, my chest plate, my leggings, and the beautiful boots. They're all enchanted. And I even have an infinity unbreaking power five bow. Shoot this as many times as I want. And I won't ever run out of arrows. It's going to be really nice for when I go back to the nether. And start dealing with ghasts and blazes and all of that fun stuff. And it'll be really helpful for the ender dragon. We're getting close. Next episode is episode 10. Which, uh, which reminds me. But I think we're probably going to end the episode here. Uh, next time we're going to take a look and see how close we are to fighting the Ender Dragon. And we'll go from there and figure out what we need to do next. So, without further ado, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>